Hello, hello everyone. We are live. I'm John Alfredson and I'm here today uh, with the day 54 in the 90 Day Ecom Challenge. Um, if you don't know me, I am um, a trainer with Techademics, uh, a coach and trainer in Ecom and Shopify specifically. So um, first let me know that you can hear me. I, I want to hear, uh, please write in the comments that you can hear me. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, talk a little bit about, uh, introduce myself a little bit, and then we can go into Q&A today. I'm going to have uh, uh, Q&A about, ask me anything about Shopify, about Facebook, about advertising on Facebook, and uh, e-com in general as well. I will do my best to answer. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, I'm John Alfredson, and uh, my background is... Um, uh, I have a technical background. I'm, I'm from Sweden originally. I have a, tech, uh, a doctor's degree in electrical engineering from 2008 from Sweden, but I decided to go into online marketing in um, 2008. After I, right when I was finished with my PhD, I decided to I wanted to do something else, so I wanted to find the online marketing with, uh, space, which would well was very appealing to me because I wanted more freedom. I was kind of burnt out with the with the engineering thing so I wanted something else and I started learning about uh, marketing but it was a long uh, long way to go because as an engineer you're not used to marketing and there was a long learning curve you know the technical stuff but but you don't know the marketing side of it so it took me a long time to get going I was struggling a lot with I tried a lot of different things in network marketing affiliate marketing and uh, yeah, online, a lot of different online investment programs and anything you can think of. I probably tried it when it comes to to learn how to advertise and how to get traffic, how to blog, how to do Google AdWords, how to do, yeah, a lot of different things online. But finally, uh, in back in um, 2015, when uh, Chris Record launched, uh, had a promotion for a course that was uh, launching in Shopify, that's when I decided I wanted to get into Shopify and, and learn and learn e-commerce, and um, that was back in November of 2015. So I thought it was a good time to start, and uh, I took uh, about two weeks to set up my Shopify store, and I learned about the strategies, about the free plus shipping, and about the retail products and all that. So I set up my store with loaded it up with like between 10 to 15 products, I think, to start with, and uh, then I started my advertising, and. Um, uh, the first day of my advertising, I made two sales. So I was I had put up eight ads and I made two sales of, of free plus shipping offer, and um, so that was uh, twenty dollars in revenue. And I spent five dollars a day per ad for eight different ads, and so I spent forty dollars and I made twenty. So I made some money. I was really excited about it because I knew I had something working because I was making sales without even me doing anything. I had the ads working for me. So that's when I decided to, okay, let's see how, how far we can take this. So the second day I continued to, to launch a few new ads and, and I focused on the ones that were selling and I made, I think nine sales this second day. Uh, so a hundred, about a hundred dollars in sales, uh, the second day, the third day I, I managed to scale it up even further to $300 in sales. And then it just went crazy. The fourth day I went to thousand dollars in sales. The fifth day was, um, uh, two thousand dollars sales. The sixth day was like four thousand dollars in sales. So, all in all, my first week I made uh, about thirteen thousand dollars in sales, and I got almost a thousand orders, which was uh, a little overwhelming. So, uh, I had to I had to hire an assistant to help me out, a virtual assistant. I had no experience, basically almost no experience with hiring virtual assistants to help me out in my business. So, that was a new thing for me. But then. I did that and I sorted it out and uh, then I, I managed to continue my success and uh, selling on Shopify and actually yeah I've been selling now for one and a half year yes actually yesterday was my one and a half year mark uh, with my store and up until now my store my, my one general store it's a general store has generated over six hundred and fifty thousand dollars in sales revenue so it's been going really well and um, yeah, that's why I'm here teaching and training uh, on Shopify. And uh, I'm training uh, 
the entrepreneurs um, at Tech Academics. I'm teaching and training them on, on how to build stores and uh, how to do Facebook advertising. And I'm also part in the uh, Tech Academics Ecom Incubator program uh, where I'm coaching and, and uh, training the students that are in that program as well. And then I have my own personal coaching uh, clients that I've had quite a few over the, the last one and a half year. So I have um, a bit of experience with Shopify and Facebook. So shoot away, ask me any, any questions uh, about, uh, well, anything about Facebook and, and, and Shopify uh, and also in general about e-commerce, but I will do my best to answer them. So, hi Amparo, hi uh, Michael, hi Bobby, hi God Save. So, uh, uh, so Bobby is asking, what do I sell? I sell the same things that you are, you are selling. I'm not going to go into the specifics of my store or what what specific items I'm selling, but I've been selling jewelry. I've been selling small little trinkets, uh, AliExpress drop shipping. Almost like 95% of the products that I've been selling have been drop shipped from from AliExpress and uh, I'm testing and getting into print on demand a little bit more now so that's I don't have a ton of experience with print on demand so but uh, but that's something I'm learning right now so uh, most of my my products have been the small trinkets like iPhone cases and jewelry bracelets necklaces and things like that So the first product I started selling, uh, what was the first product I started selling that gained traction? So the first I started selling, there was a, it was a free plus shipping offer uh, and I launched it right before Christmas. It was in a, well, right before Thanksgiving actually. So that's why one, one um, thing um, extra, people are in buying mode in, in the holiday season. So that's uh, easier to get things to take off if you have the right product. And that's what happened for me. So the product I sold was, was a, that took off it was a piece of jewelry so that uh, but it was got really popular people wanted to give it away to yes yeah, so as a holiday gift a Christmas gift uh, and so on so what apps do you recommend so apps for Shopify there are that depends on what level you're at there are a lot of different apps that you can install but on the basic as a the basic set of apps uh, I recommend, first of all, I recommend that you have the app uh, Conversio for for creating nice looking receipts uh, to send to your customer and, and they, that, that app can also drive traffic back so you can get more sales with um, uh, just by, by having, they having recommendations in the receipt for other products that are similar to what they just bought. Another app that I highly recommend is the abandonment card protector, abandonment protector that, that recovers abandoned cards because um, that's the, actually the app that's giving me the highest ROI. Um, and um, I had um, back in back in November of last year, I had my my first one hundred thousand dollar month. I actually got to one hundred eighteen thousand in sales in November. And um, from that app alone, the abandonment protector app that recovered almost ten thousand dollars worth of orders for me uh, just by recovering abandoned carts. And I only paid. I think like fifty, sixty dollars or something like that to use that app for the month. So it starts at eight eight dollars a month. It's a paid app, but it goes up from there depending on how many emails it has. It sends out, and that depends on much how much traffic you have. But but it's it's definitely the best my top app when it when it comes to return on investment. So that's highly recommended. Other apps that I recommend are the uh, apps that increase conversion, like. Uh, uh, one is called FOMO, or, or uh, and there is a similar one called uh, Sales Pop, uh, which pops up a, a, a notification that of social proof that someone else has bought a product in your store. So when people are coming and visiting, they can see that other people are buying. So it gives give them more confidence in also placing an order. Uh, as well as countdown timers that are increasing the uh, the uh, scare, giving scarcity and increasing conversion as well. The countdown timers are also apps that I highly recommend. And apps that basically makes the makes the site looks more your store looks more legit gives credibility like badges and stuff with trust badges and things like that can also help in, in increasing your sales. <clears throat> uh, see what other questions you have. So I have a pr big problem on the way of targeting the right people. So yeah, this is a this is a question about. 
but who uh, the audience and that, that is uh, one of the biggest uh, problems for a lot of people and um, <clears throat> I always I mean try to find products that are very niche specific so they are as easy as possible to target so that I can have a very defined audience on they have a very defined audience on Facebook um, for example like you know the niches that dog pet niches for example are very easy hobbies a lot of different hobbies uh, wine lovers religion are easy to target so and then when I when I go and look and try to find an audience within that niche to target I go into my ads manager and first I type in the first uh, broad interest for that or niche basically for that for that group so if I'm if I'm advertising to uh, a pitbull necklace for example then I go in and type pitbulls uh, breed or something like that in the ad section where I, where I add my interest in the ads manager and um, from there I try that's going to be a broad interest with mostly likely millions of people that will like pitbulls so I try to narrow it down by going and um, basically try to narrow it down by look look for smaller groups like associations magazines that are related to just pit bulls, not just dogs in general, but pit bulls. So if I can find pit bull magazines, pit bull associations, uh, websites that are all about loving their pit bull, pit bull for pit bull owners and stuff like that, those are the things I'm trying to target uh, with my ad, uh, with my ad set. And uh, also I try to layer it in at least two la two layers deep. So I do intersect audience, or it's also called flex targeting, flex targeting, intersect targeting. And um, so I, have, I try to have at least two layers because if I have two layers, first they need to, to like the, uh, for example, Pitbull magazines, but then they also need to like the pages that are, are about I, I love my Pitbull and love Pitbulls and stuff like that. Then you have two requirements on, on the audience. It's going to be a more narrow audience. They're going to be more targeted. They're going to be much more likely to click on your ad if your ad is about a Pitbull product, Pitbull related product. So that is how I try to find my audiences, uh, and uh, I'm not going to go into deeper into it here because it's hard to explain by just talking. It's easy to show, but I leave that for another day's training. <clears throat> um, so we are having a Q and A. So if you have any questions uh, about Shopify and uh, Facebook advertising, just post them here, and I'll try to answer as many as I can today. Uh, and uh, I'm John Albertson, like I said before, if you, and I'm one of the trainers for Techademics. And uh, let's see here. Um, I'll need to learn how to delegate work. And um, yeah, delegation is definitely important when you're when you're starting launching your store because as soon as you start making sales, you should think about outsourcing some parts, some tasks because. You don't want to handle your customer support yourself because that's going to drain your mind because handling, I mean, dealing with customers that are not satisfied because most customers that are contacting support, they're not satisfied in some way and they have some complaint or something. So you're only going to hear negative talk all the time from those people and uh, you want to hand that over to someone else that you can pay to to uh, do that for you. So you can focus on the cre creative side and, and uh, what other products to launch and what to do next in your business. So... Think, start thinking as soon as you start making sales, you should, should start thinking about that hiring someone for for customer support and also for for order fulfillment. So, I hired my first VAs after I got my first thousand orders. So it was a lot of catch up after that <clears throat> first week of orders, but but eventually we got caught up uh, within. Um, week or two and uh, most people got their items before Christmas but that was a big learning experience that I, sh I should have been pr preparing for hiring a, 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 an assistant right away when I launched my store which I didn't so I had, I got help from from uh, my wife and from my my fam other family members in the big first week but then I realized it wasn't sustainable so then I hired someone and you can hire someone from the Philippines or uh, Philippines is where I hired my virtual assistants and um, they're doing a great job. They're very reliable and uh, they're not very expensive. So you can easily 
hire them on a, on a, an hourly basis so they just you just pay them for the hours they work and uh, I go to upwork.com to hire uh, virtual assistants and uh, you can find hundreds of thousands of uh, different freelancers there so you can definitely find what you're looking for and uh, they have also a system that can track what the assistant is doing so they take a screenshot of the assistant's screen every few minutes so that you can actually go in and look at that screenshot and see that they're actually doing what they're saying that they're doing so you can so they're not I mean wasting your time or wasting your money so that's highly recommended site for outsourcing hello Sophia how are you doing so what is the one thing if there is a one thing that completely shifted your ads crack the code understand product match with audience but still looking for the one so yeah it, it is all about finding the one product I mean the product that's that's the audience gonna like so it's about testing products and I've gotten a lot of coaching and tra taking a lot of training myself during the last couple of years since I started with Ecom and <clears throat> the best some of the best people that I've learned from that are doing the best they are constantly looking for new products and looking to testing new products it's all about testing products because a lot of your a lot of the time your ads are not going to work when you launch a new product so and that's the majority of your ads are not going to work because it is just going to be a good i mean experiences for you but they're not going to make be profitable for you either so maybe in the beginning only one out of ten of your ads or your products are going to make sales and that's normal don't freak out about that because that's what what happened to me too. I mean, when I launched my eight first ads, only one of them was the real profitable one. I think maybe one or two made sales, but there was only one that really made it the big money. And that's also what's going to happen. What's happening for most people? That it's just most of the revenue for a store is coming just from a very small little uh, <clears throat> group of products usually. So even if they have hundreds of products in the store, most likely only less than. 10% of the products are gonna make up for the majority of the revenue, like 80% of the revenue in the store. So, so you don't need a lot of products, you need to find the right products. And the, the big players that are, I know people that are making $500,000 a month in sales with, with the Shopify and, and even others that have made a million a month at some months. And, all they're doing is launching new products, testing new ads, launching new ad sets, testing new products day, daily. They, they test a lot of products and launch a lot of new ads daily. So they're not just relying on that one single product and trying that single product every angle of that. They're just they're trying a lot of other products as well. So they're constantly launching. And that is the, uh, one of the biggest keys to become successful with Shopify, I believe, and, uh, and this game. So. And then that's also just something you need to do yourself in the beginning so that you learn it. But then you can, that's also something you can outsource. You can hire someone that, to, that you can train and, and do that task for you to do product research and, and uh, create new ads for new ad sets for you so that you just go in and launch them when they're, uh, you, they just create the posts for you and, and things like that. <clears throat> so let's see, other questions? Uh, Please post questions here. So, which training do you think delivers better when it comes to results, the Entrepreneur Club or the Impact Series? Okay, so the Impact Series is, uh, that's the, the basic foundation for internet marketing, but I think the Entrepreneur Club <clears throat> is gonna, that is coming up with new content all the time, so it's actually something that I would definitely recommend you to start with. Uh, because you will ha always have fresh content coming out what's actually working right now so entrepreneur club is the is the way to go if you need to choose between the entrepreneur club or the impact series training to start with <clears throat> so we're doing Q&A about Shopify and uh, Facebook so Facebook ads so feel free to post any questions and there are not a lot of questions here there are 44 people on I ask more questions please um, or something else you want me to talk about so is there much margins in print on demand so Tahir is asking that so yes print on demand is is uh, absolutely something I recommend all of you getting into but I am not necessarily don't necessarily 
recommend you to start with print on demand when you're learning because it's also more takes more money and uh, and uh, requires more design skills and things like that. So it's in the beginning if you're new to e-com, start with a shop set up a Shopify store, start with drop shipping from AliExpress, find products that are proven to sell or that people are like. There are a lot of ways to find products and there are other trains about that, but find products that are proven to sell well and uh, that others are selling successfully and uh, try to model what they're doing and and learn how to get sales with, with the free plus shipping model first because it's the easiest model to make sales with and uh, to get sales with. <clears throat> free plus shipping you're going to get a lot more people taking action and, and clicking in on your ad if you're offering a free plus shipping than if you're offering a product that is paid with free shipping or, or is paid plus shipping. So even if it's a very low cost, even if it's a one cent product, one cent plus shipping is going to get a lot less conversion than free plus shipping. That's just psychology of people. When they, when they, when they hear the word free, it's something that triggers them to take action, take more, more people to take action. So it's going to be easier for you to make your sales that way but then the margins in the free plus shipping products are not very high so you need to sell very many of them i've sold a lot of free plus shipping items over over the years since i launched my store and uh, i ha i actually just crossed my 50,000 order so five, five, 50,000 orders and uh, i've sold tens of thousands of uh, those orders have been free plus shipping orders so uh, there, there is definitely if you can get a volume, if you can get hundreds of sales a day with free plus shipping offers, you can definitely make good money with it. But, um, but you need to scale it up because the margins are only a few, like three, four, five dollars maybe per order, the profit margin. So, in addition to that, you want to add when you learn how to get make sales with with the free plus shipping and all that, you want to add other products that have higher margins so that you can uh, get a higher average order value for. You with your with your uh, well when, from your customers and uh, print on demand is a great way to do that print on demand products you can you can get great i mean you can you have your unique designs you can you need maybe you need to hire a designer if you're not good at designing yourself but that's a very small cost compared to what it can can give you so that that's definitely recommended if you want to get started with the print on demand and uh, I just hired a designer myself uh, last week so that I'm going to get in more into the print on demand right now. But definitely the margins are higher. So, for example, if you're selling T-shirts with print on demand, there are places where you can, where you can get the, the cost of the T-shirt down to like $6 plus shipping or something like that for print on a T-shirt. And uh, then you can sell them for $19.95 plus shipping. So you can take in $24.95, for example. Or you can even charge twenty four ninety five plus shipping plus four ninety five shipping, so you take in thirty dollars, and you only pay like six well six plus a few dollars in shipping. So maybe you pay nine dollars to the print on demand company to to print the shirt. So then you have uh, almost like twenty dollars in in margin or uh, markup there, so so that you can spend on advertising and the rest goes to your profit. So there's definitely more profits there. And then you can add other unique items like phone cases. You can add uh, uh, shoes, hats, mugs, uh, a lot of different print on demand items. So you can get a lot of unique and you can create bundles and stuff like that with similar, I mean, products with the same design, different product with the same design that can also help you. Uh, so print on demand is definitely recommended to increase your order value. So print on demand takes a little bit longer to learn. I think if you're not a designer by trade or good at design, you need to have a, you need to learn what's actually working when it comes to design. It might not be the designs that you actually like yourself that are actually selling. So you need to trust what what actually the the public opinion are, what people are actually buying, and, when, when, and for that you need to do research and look what other what other sellers are selling, what type of designs that are getting a lot of traction and things like that. So that takes a little bit of time, but the good thing, you can learn that while you are still, while you're beginning, well, begin first with AliExpress and, um, and you have all the, the products already designed for you, ready to ship from, from AliExpress. So you can start making money. You just need to focus on the Facebook ads, but then also you can start learning about how to 
what designs are good and things like that while you are making sales with AliExpress. So then you can jump into print on demand later. So any other questions you have here? I can't see any more questions right now. There are only 23 comments. I don't know. Is, is, uh, you don't have any more questions or is, is it just me? I can't see any more. So would you using the same pixel, Christian is asking, would using the same pixel for your Shopify store and gear bubble print on demand store ruin this, the pixel? So I, no it, no, it doesn't have to ruin the pixel. You have one pixel per ad account and I would recommend if you can to create a different ad account for a different store, but you don't have to, you can have, I mean, as well as you can have one pixel for a general store with multiple niches in it, you can have one pixel f with multiple stores in different niches as well, and it will still work. And does it make a difference if you have a multiple, I mean, if you have one pixel per niche, maybe, maybe you get higher conversion if you have one pixel dedicated to each niche so that, that, so that the pixel actually learn what type of buyers are for that niche specifically more more than but i have a general store i have one pixel i've had fifty thousand sales like i said with with uh, just that pixel and that is in many many different niches and i'm still making sales in multiple niches anytime i try a new niche i, I usually make sales so it, it doesn't matter that much to have uh, different pixels based on different niches but but it could be good from another aspect to have a different niche for a different pixel for for a different store in case you decide to want to sell your store that because then you the buyer usually want to have your pixel and your pixel data as well so that you should need to sell that and, and that is tied to your ad account so you need to have a separate ad account for that store so that you can actually sell the ad account together with the store and you will get a lot more money for your store <clears throat> All right. Is Reddit good advertising method and does SEO help me the most? So Reddit, yeah, that could be could be good for, for free um, marketing. I haven't used Reddit. I know there are people that are using Reddit, Reddit very successfully to get uh, a lot of traffic, but you need to be very careful because they don't tolerate people spamming their link or, or doing any anything kind of self-promotion. So you need to be very careful how you promote it on Reddit. And that's what I've heard I haven't haven't uh, done any marketing on Reddit myself. I've had some of my products recommended on Reddit by other users on Reddit. So I have had got some traffic from Reddit and sales from that as well. So definitely a, a good source of traffic if you can make it work uh, for free. And SEO, LC, uh, I don't focus, I'm not focused on SEO. I do the SEO ra uh, ranking. I mean, I type the SEO part of the description in the product listings. So that it so that it can help me with uh, ranking in the search engines, but I don't uh, I don't really focus on on getting it ranked. It will happen automatically if people start coming to your store uh, store more and more. Google will see that your site is getting a lot of traffic, and it will index more of your pages and rank them higher. So I don't know if there is anything wrong, but I can't see any more questions. There are not, no more comments here. In the, are you still hearing what hearing me? Can you please make a comment right now if you're hearing what I'm saying? Hmm. <clears throat> so there are probably targeting people for apps to recommend. So using the same pixel as the first product. So obviously, no, I don't get, I don't get, can, not, I'm not able to see the comments anymore as it seems. So yeah, I'm gonna talk a little bit anyway, a little bit more about um, the, the challenges that I, that I see people facing with the, uh, specifically with the, uh, with, consistency and when it comes to the mindset. So like I said, your ads are not gonna, most of your ads are not gonna work uh, when, you're, when you're running them, but don't be discouraged by that because you're buying data, data, you're buying experience. And when you find ads that are working, they will make up for all of your losses from your other ads that didn't work. 
So when you find that product that you, you will be able to scale, then uh, definitely it will make up for everything. So, and then beginning, maybe one out of 10 is gonna work for you. I don't know your ratio, and maybe even less than that if you're, if you're new to it, but when, with practice, you'll get better and you'll get more ads will actually work for you. And eventually maybe two out, two out of 10 will work, maybe three out of 10. But I think that for, in most cases, for most people, they will not get, I mean, they will still still have more failing ads than ads that are actually working, even if you ask the most successful marketers that are, that are on Shopify, that are on, um, yeah, they're making hundreds of thousands a month and they're launching ads every day. I mean, they still need to cut off majority of their ads. Anyway, every, each and every one of them, just ask them. They, they launch ads and they, they look at them closely for for the first day or, or depending on the budget, how much they're spend, willing to spend. And then when they see that the stats are not working or not in their favor, they're turning them off quickly. So it's they're all about launching a lot of ads. So if they launch a hundred new ads one day, they by the second or third day, they might have turned out, turned off 80 of them, so, you know? So, and there's only like 20 of them that are still making sales and, and generating money. And then they continue to launch more ads. So they building up a portfolio of working ads and while they're turning off the ads that are not working. So that's the way to, one way to scale it up really big, just launching ads all the time. <clears throat> and um, a lot of people have challenges with scaling <clears throat> and uh, scaling, uh, know how to, how to scale out and scale, scale up. So my recommendations for scaling is <clears throat> first try to scale, scale um, to any, to, well, any audience that is really obvious to scale to. If you have an audience, we start with an audience of 500 to 800,000 people maybe, and you're making consistent sales on a daily basis, I would say, or at least you're making every other day. If you're spending $5 a day, you're making sale every other day, at least. When you've made like 10 sales or 15 sales or something like that, <clears throat> For the, of that product, then you could be pretty, pretty confident that it has some potential for scaling. You don't know how much yet, but it should be possible to scale it to some extent. <clears throat> what I would recommend then is that you do go and uh, first go and create a custom audience based on all the visitors to that specific product page. So then you then then the pixel will record all the visitors on that specific product page. Uh, there's there are other trainings about how to create custom audiences in, in your Facebook ad ads account, but uh, Go and create that and based on that custom audience you create also a lookalike audience if you have enough people in the custom audience I would recommend Minimum of 500 people in the custom audience preferably a thousand people to get a good enough lookalike audience based on that because Facebook will then go out and Look for similar people that similar people that have already to the people that have already visited your product, and they will put them together in the one percent of the U.S. population, for example, that are the most similar to the people that have visited your website. So then you have two million people more that you can advertise to, and you can uh, try to make sales from. And those lookalike audiences are usually work pretty well. When when I had my best month back in November, like I said, the hundred thousand dollar month, I Oh, well, 50, more than 50% of my sales came from lookalike audiences. So they make up for a huge amount of sales when you're scaling up. Other ways to, to increase your sales when you're, when you're just having uh, an, ad, an ad set with $5 ad or, or one or two ad sets with an audience of, of 500 to 1,000 people, 500,000 to 800,000 people, sorry is that you divide that 500,000 audience into multiple segments with into age groups, for example, or divide them into uh, iPhone users and Android users so that you get more different ad sets. So you split them up. So, and to each one of those groups that you split, split up into, you can create one ad set for each group. So then now you have maybe five, six, seven different ad sets and you can each run a $5 ad to each one of those five ad sets. That will be, uh, that will be very helpful to spend money, spend more money because when you're spending more money, you will make more sales. 
So that's a five dollar ad can only take you that far. Or maybe you can get the the cost down to get, make a sale to maybe a dollar fifty, two dollars, something like that. If you're really good, if you have a product that sells really well, the average cost to acquire a sale might be, you might get down to a dollar, two dollars, something like that. <clears throat> but the, for a five dollar ad, five dollar ads that you you will only be able to make then two, maybe three sales or something like that on a daily basis, and that's not gonna make you rich. So you need to spend more money. So if, now if you can duplicate that ad set and split into age groups, like I said, so let's say you have five different age groups that you split it up into. So now you'll, you know you add run a $5 a day ad to each one of those age groups. That means $5 a day times five groups, that's $25 a day. So now out of these uh, $25 a day, each one of these ads that now has the potential to make three sales, maybe. So that will mean you can make 15 sales from $25 a day, potentially. And I'm not saying that all of these ads are gonna work, but some of them are and some of them are not probably. But that's how you, how you scale it up and to, to basically, without increasing your budget, because increasing your budget can also help you reach more people, but sometimes when you're increasing your budget, you're also uh, missing out because face, Facebook creating a budget change, changing the budget for your ad set can cause the optimization to start over to optimize uh, for well within Facebook so that Facebook start re optimize your ad and then you lose all the momentum that you have going on. So, if don't change the budget on a running ad set, I do not recommend that. So, if you want to change the, up the budget, create a duplicate of the ad set that is working. And let the original one run, continue to run if, it, if it's profitable, if it's making sales. And then um, basically you up the budget on the new du duplicate. The, that way you can uh, scale it up and uh, yeah, reach more people without losing momentum of the original ad. You let the original, old, I, I say never touch your uh, uh, ad that is running and it's profitable and making you money. So don't touch it. If you want to do something, do some changes, just create a duplicate of it, duplicate of the ad set and um, make the changes to the new duplicate. <clears throat> so I can still can't see your questions in the comments here. So I don't know if I, I don't dare to refresh the page here. Uh, because I guess I will lose you. So let's see. Or actually, let's do this. I, since I can't see your questions, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna end the recording of this uh, live stream right now, and I'm actually gonna I'm gonna start a part two for today. So I'm, I I can do it tw twenty more minutes. So I'm gonna pause this right now. I'm gonna launch a part two of this. So. Hopefully I can see your questions. So post your questions again if I haven't asked your question in the new new live stream. Let's see if this is finished now. Have a good day, everyone. See you soon. <clears throat>